Hi, this is Lise Nielsen, Artist in the Woods. Today, I am going to look at getting back into this painting. This is a video on how to finish a painting. A lot of times I'll get it to this point and I'll say, oh, it's finished. But really, I need to add some details to it. I was looking through some of the books that I have. This one is Sergei Bongard. Uh, and you can see how he gets some detail in there, but he really is uh, doing a lot of simplification. This artist is Anders Zorn, um, but you can see the way he added detail. He probably painted in his large masses and darks and then uh, either let it dry. This looks like dry brush to me. So probably let it dry and then came back in with um, his detail on top of that. I do want to focus on changing the mountain a little bit. I want to mix up some of this mountain color. I've got it more leaning towards the purple. I can add more blue into that now just knowing what I'm going to do with it. And then I can either extend the mountain over here. I don't, like I said, I don't like this tangent. Uh, these here, so I'm looking at this. This is my guide right up here. These are trees or bushes in here. I may just want to bring these trees in here, darker. Let those grow up and, and hold our eye into the painting. It's just a drop off here and this is not good. Okay, so um, I'll start with that as a base. So that's my ultramarine. And then I've got some, uh, some of my alizarin crimson here. And I'll make some of that in. That is way darker than anything in the scene. So we'll grab a little bit of the titanium white and mix that in. That's more purple than what I want. I want it to lean towards the blue. And then I'll grab a little tiny bit of the lemon yellow, the cad lemon yellow. So this is a nice blue that I'm getting here. Um, it, I can compare it here with this. I can compare it like this up here. And I am going to be working more. I'm going to go above that halfway mark with these trees. These are going to be tree bushes, whatever. In there. So here's my blue that I'm taking in here. Actually, it may still be wet, but not acting very wet, if it is at all. But it's going on nicely, that's for sure. Haven't been painting in a, a few days because we have had this family marathon going on here. Um, uh, where we live, we have certain family members who have moved up here buying houses here and um, so there's been a lot of vacationing going on and uh, meeting and having a great time um, it's just a challenge to get some work done and that's happening because of course I want to go to the lake and play right so, so. so I'm bringing this blue I'm Rather than have purple going on up here, I'm putting more blue in and I'm keeping a very, very soft edge. As it comes forward, I can go in with some of the more of the organic colors coming in. As it comes down the mountain, of course, it's getting closer and closer to you. So the colors of those, those things will will change. It is not a green green. It's going to have some of that blue into it. 
grayish green, I guess, a little bit, but enough green to know that it is green. I used white, I used some lemon yellow, cad lemon yellow. I used some mixtures of this, so that would be a combination of the uh, alizarin crimson, the ultramarine blue, and then I had some viridian out there. So you can see where I'm using all, really I'm using all my colors. The only, the only two colors I haven't used so far are the cadmium, which will be more in the foreground because it's a warm yellow and the cad red same thing and those will be my orange my oranges all right and i can go ahead and apply a little more green in here so this kind of it's a mesmerizing area in here really uh, you could sit on the, the beach there You've got the Pacific Ocean on one side of you, and then if you turn the other way, you're looking at the, at the lagoon area. It's really a gorgeous area. So, so here's some of this in here. I look, when I'm using a color like this, I look at uh, where else that color is, because I want my seeing to harmonize. I want the colors to harmonize. So they may be modified, they may be warmer as they come forward, but uh, they are, they sh you should see those colors around in the scene, not too busy. So I often will bend color on the palette and I want to use some of that, but I want it to be I want it to blend in a little bit. So I'm using some of the mixture of the blue and then I have grabbed some of the yellow and the red, the cad yellow medium and the cad red light and I'm mixing uh, some of that orangey color but mixing some of the blue into it. The blue will be the modifier because it is the uh, complement of the orange so it is the modifier so this is the it's kind of a mid-tone that i'm painting and it was just a little too abrupt in here i want to mix up some of this green in here and then i will see some of that reflection that i didn't get into my scene here so as the year this was done several years ago not like way, way back, but several, several years ago. And as the years have gone by, my painting skills have developed as well. So my studies back then are not useless, but I can look at it and say, well, I just didn't um, see that. You know, I didn't, I didn't pick up on that in the scene. So um, now this is going, I don't want to lose my dark, but I do want those grasses, those to look like grasses there. You see that? So I've got it on my, I've got it on my palette knife, not, not too thick. Um, and then I just kind of go up and down with the tip of it and it goes on there. When it starts to scrape it off, you can go back and get more paint on there. Um, that works pretty well. So, and then these are more grasses here. It looks like I am getting some of these, um, some of these orange colors in these grasses. I can go in with some of those darks underneath. I want it to, I want them to read as grasses. So I'm making that grass movement. These are dark, darker than what's on top. So I'll go back in with some lighter uh, parts here. 
it certainly helps. I don't want too much detail towards the edge of the painting. We don't want our eye to be drawn uh, just off the edge. So we keep that in mind when we're working on the composition. The blue and the orange are working beautifully together now that I added the blue onto the mountain. And then adding this in just really helped a lot. And the green back there. Um, yeah, it's coming together. There is some green uh, in these as well, but I don't want to overdo it. It's got a lot going on here. Um, I want it to look like the same. Uh, I keep thinking of animal because <laughs> I got that term from Ken Oster. So I did a little workshop with Ken Oster way back. He's, he's passed now. Really nice man. Um, he came to Carmel and he did a little two day workshop and he was mixing up his pots of paint and he kept, he said, now these are all the same animal and this group over here is a different animal. So this, is the same animal as this and this okay and these also are part of that but they will change as they go back so they are part of the same animal so what you can do is take your pot of paint and bend it as you know that's going back in the distance you would bend it towards the more um, cool and lighter color as it goes back into the distance these are these sagey kinds of um, growths back there. They take on the same, the same kind of color. I love the color that I have in it. I don't want to, I really don't want to touch that very much because even though it is very simplified, um, it's working. And so I really don't want to mess that up. I'm going to leave that alone for now. I may just leave it alone and that's fine. This is supposed to be sand in here. Um, I think it's reading just fine for that. Uh, I don't want to change that too much, but I want to put in a dark around it. And um, so now that type of thing with the palette knife, if you're going to put a dark, dark in, you might have to go back with the brush to soften it, but that's how you do that with the palette knife. You get it on the edge and um, you just go in like that. So this is sand in here, so I don't want it to look like plants. I want it to have that strip, that flat horizontal strip. I'm going to mix up a little more of this. Um, I'm using some alizarin. Uh, I can borrow some of this blue tone in here for the dark and that remember that mixture. Um, and then I want it to stay dark so I want to stay away from really light colors. However, if I just touch the yellow a little bit for this. Now, this is a purple, so the complement of purple is yellow. If I touch it a little bit, what it'll do is just calm it down, gray it out. Now I can go back and grab some more of that blue. So we use our, our color knowledge um, to help us know I'm going to get, I'm going to use some warmer yellow into that to um, help us know how to, how to um, mix those colors appropriately. And that is all related to the, to the color wheel. So if you don't know color theory, get yourself a color wheel. I mean something like this, and you don't have to get one that's this complicated either. You can get a really simple color wheel or make one of your own. 
and you start with red, yellow, and blue, your primary colors, and then you add colors out from there by mixing those colors. So I just mixed a little bit of the CAD red light with some of the white, and now um, I'm touching some of the CAD lemon. I want more of the white in there. What I'm looking at is this right in here, and I see that it's a pretty light color, but it's in the background. It needs a little blue in there. I'm looking at my, my um, study. And I'm going, I'm picking up color as I go. Some of the plants will overlap other plants in here. So I'm bringing some in front of others. I've been planning for a long time to um, post more than one video a week. And just to get this thing off to a really good kickstart. And um, I, I haven't been able to do that because summer months for me, the summer months are really, really busy. But I am planning a great vacation. I call it a vacation because I get to go away from home and paint. <laughs> so I'm going to be doing a working vacation. Um, and I'm so excited about it. I'm going to go to Idaho and paint. And I'm not really sure where I'm going to end up in Idaho. I'm just going to go paint and camp and wherever the road takes me, wherever my mood takes me in there, whatever I see, I'm going to stop and do my plan. I'm going to try to post while I'm on the road. Uh, hopefully that works out. I will try my best to get those posted. And um, anyway, I just wanted to let you know to be on the lookout for more than one, one uh, video a week because that really has been my goal. I want there to be a good library of videos for you to watch. It really helps to watch them again and again. Um, I have a a library of videos of my own that I've purchased from other artists that I, I watched a lot when I was learning to paint. And I would watch those videos over and over and over. So I want there to be a great library for you to use, to utilize. And um, I love YouTube because it's free and I learned so much on YouTube. I learned how to you know, make changes on my van. and <laughs> So I think YouTube is great. But um, just keep watching and you will definitely learn a lot. And I'm so excited that I get to take this trip finally. Uh, kids are back to school. Uh, we won't be having a lot of visitors here. So anyway, I, I just wanted to let you know about that and please uh, stay tuned because um, um, I, I can't wait to see my own videos up there. So I think that the paintings, I'm so excited to be going back to Idaho. I love Idaho. So I love California. California is wonderful. That's why I live here. But um, Idaho is is a fantastic state and uh, to paint in and to be in nature and that's what kind of makes me tick so anyway i'm excited about that I'm excited to to finally be able to share some of that with you guys i am adding a little detail wherever i think it needs that's what i've been doing i'm going to add some highlights on my grasses i want to work some with the water so that's where i'm going next with it so now i'm going to mix up some watercolor so start with my white i'm going to put my white out and then it is a reflection of the sky um 
I don't know if that cobalt was the sky color that I had. I, it may have been that that I used, but I can get that anyway. Just adding a little bit of the... So this was, um, I used titanium white, ultramarine blue, and a tiny bit of the lemon, cad lemon. And that's pretty darn close. Now, you see this color here. So light colors actually reflect darker. So if you look at this, so look at this picture here. Um, see how light the sky is and darker on the water. So remember that. Light colors reflect darker. Dark colors reflect lighter. So that's the way that goes. So now, is this darker than the sky? No. So I want to go darker than the sky. I'm following that rule. Rules are, I always hear people say, rules are made to be broken. But the problem with that is that many of the rules that we have in, for plein air are based on science. The science of the scene. So um, you need to, you know, it works in the photos. You want to make it work in your painting too. And you make it work by, um, by adhering to the science of that, the scientific rules. Okay, I just added some alizarin into that because I want to go darker than that and I want it to be the right color when I go darker. When I put the reflection in. I don't quite have it and I'm a little nervous to do this because I like what I'm seeing here. I would like to use the palette knife to put this on but I'm a little bit um, I, I'll do it right here but I think in here I want to do some pooling and so I want that brush to be able to make that motion. I could do it here a little bit and pull it so if I pull it this way a little. You can always repaint the grasses so don't worry about that. Grasses are easy. All right and then here we've got some going this way and some going this way. This is going to change it a lot and that's why sometimes it's just uh, you want to go, you want to err on the side of caution, but if you know that your painting isn't done yet and you want to get it better, then you need to look at some of these kinds of things. We've got some, so dark colors reflect lighter. So I've got some of these grasses in here. Much red back. And this will come out this way come towards your eyes. You know, it, it is a little nerve-wracking when you when you think you've got something and then you you know it needs something else and you gotta add it and you're afraid to lose what you have.
I really want that darker blue in there. So just bear with me here. I want it to be peaceful as well, not like too much happening all over. So somehow I have to calm this down. Right color looks looks good. I don't have to understand everything that's happening in here, but um, just enough to where if you understand it in the foreground, if it's in the background, you'll know what it is because it's related. So I'll put these in and then I'll go in and play with them a little bit. 
they, they do go pretty much every which way. So I did pull my my knife this way a little bit with that, and then I want some even darker areas of that green. The green does have a little red in it. I had chosen a different path with school, um, became a teacher, and um, so I'm still teaching, right? Anyway, um, I became a teacher and did that for a number of years and but at the same time I was always working on my art uh, skills my painting skills drawing and painting and doing a lot of different kinds of artistic things so you just you don't shut it off when it's there you know that's what you should be doing um, you can't shut it off so my intent was always to go back and and do that. So I do have an art degree, um, but um, with a teaching credential on top of that. So anyway, I at that time that I was working on my own learning, learning to plein air paint, uh, learning. Uh, how to handle the um, the landscape because I realized that's what I liked the most. Um, I was searching. I did a lot of workshops. So during the summertime when I was off, I was able to do workshops or even sometimes I would take um, a sabbatical type situation and um, do some workshops and I was able to do that because I did have the art degree so part of my teaching I was teaching art but most of it I wasn't I like teaching people I enjoy it it's rewarding um, I love painting Anyways, these are a combination of colors in here, and, and you really want to get the, the character of these reeds and whatnot. You can hold the, the palette knife in different directions. Uh, it's really helpful to know some different techniques. So sometimes I hold it like this, and I'm going up and down, and Sometimes I'm going straight down with that edge. Um, sometimes I'm, um, you know, I'll pull it to the side or I'll pull it this way and get some flat areas. The pal palette knife is a really exciting tool to use. Um, I haven't always worked with the palette knife. Uh, it's been a lot of fun though. Some of them uh, pop up in in different areas, you know, they'll come up on these little sandy areas. Now this, this orange that I'm making, I'm using a little alizarin, this is kind of for the background area, um, but I do want it to pop a little bit, so maybe I will touch this a little. With plants, you know, if you get the contour of them pretty well, trees, plants, get the contour, and then the, the viewer can kind of see what it is. Okay, so a little more, a couple of other places. Ooh, these talk to myself. So I don't want it just back there. Remember what I said about wanting to spread some of those colors out a little bit. Um, 
I, I do like that that I did just did. Okay, where do I want to add this though? Because the grasses really aren't very orange, but I could add it back here um, if I tone it down a little bit. You know, when I say CAD, I mean CADMIM. Okay, it's just my shortened version of that. Okay, let's see if this reads right. I'll put some of this in. See, it'll, um, if I do this, it should help. And I like using the palette knife because it frees it up a little bit because, um, so anyway, it'll help to make this become more uh, harmonized. So I'm actually liking this painting a lot. There is some of this coming in here. Do I want it? Um, or is it gonna detract from the rest of the painting? Cause I don't really want it, want my eye to bounce over to here. I kind of like it staying in here. I like the way this looks in here too. So what I might do is just add some here. Where's my center? It's here. I add it lower. Just, just barely over there. Not too much. So, let's see. orange and blue play right there. Dark. Don't worry, I'm not going to leave this just like this. I just wanted it to Some beautiful reflections uh, coming into the water. And um, so like this, so it might show here some. Um, 
So don't forget the reflections when you're doing your paintings. Um, that's the fun stuff, boy, I tell you. Makes the paintings sing. So when you have reflections and on water, um, you have these um, horizontal lines that go across and uh, the, it's the ripples in the water and they go across the reflections and, and that's what makes them work well there. Uh, like, like in here, you might have something going across the reflection. That reflection wouldn't be much back there anyway so um, and then in here this will read uh, lighter because that's a dark so let's grab some of the colors that would be in there and then we're gonna we're gonna go lighter knife is really cool for for doing things like reflections it really is very very effective Okay, so um, there's just a couple little things bothering me about this. First of all, the, um, the grasses are a little harsh looking because I, I, I don't know if it's because of the palette knife or what, but I want to soften those a little bit. And then this line is just kind of drawing me out. Uh, it's, uh, it's not helping to push me up into the painting. So I kind of want to restructure this a little bit. See if I can do that. Maybe make this one bigger than the rest of them. That might help with variation. I'm just going to try softening some of this stuff that's going on in here. Um, because it's really distracting some of that. So I'm simplifying is what I'm doing. So you have to try it out and not be afraid to try it out. And when it's not working, don't be afraid to change it.
Um, and it's best if, if you can work it out beforehand and, and get it all ready. Uh, but some things just don't show up until later. Sometimes when you uh, work on a canvas and make things bigger, so in other words, it might work on a little canvas, but not on a larger canvas. So that's a possibility too. Just trying to make this mass look a little bigger in here and redirect things to where they're they're coming at. So now I'm gonna go in with some water. I really wanted to show you today how I go about finishing my painting. Anyway, what shall we call this? Maybe the lagoon? That would be good. Thank you so much for watching my video today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I hope you hit the like button and send me your questions. If you have any questions about what I've been doing, and I hope you try the palette knife. It's been great for me. I love using it towards the end of the painting. Some of the parts of the painting wouldn't look as good as they look unless I use the palette knife. 
uh, get out and paint and um, hope you subscribe to my channel happy painting this is Lise Nielsen artist in the woods take care